The search of an abandoned Jefferson County prison camp leads to an unexpected discovery. What I found was far beyond anything I expected that included none other than the King of Pop himself, Michael Jackson. Join me as we explore history. In today's video, I ended up in Trustful, Alabama because I was looking for an old prison camp and a furnace. To my surprise, what I discovered was a beautiful neighborhood with a colorful history. I talked to a resident that was the first born baby in that neighborhood. I learned a few facts about the furnace and discovered what was left of that old prison camp. I even discovered some facts about Michael Jackson being in that neighborhood. Yeah, you heard me right. That Michael Jackson, King of Pop. So join me today as we explore history. The Great Depression defined not only a generation, but also a century. It was the worst economic downturn in the history of this country, with the stock market crash on October 29, 1929. President Roosevelt led the United States through the Great Depression by greatly expanding the powers of the federal government through a series of programs and reforms known as the New Deal. One of these programs was to improve the living conditions for Americans by giving them the opportunity to experience small-scale farming and home ownership throughout the United States. One of these homesteads development is the Cahaba Project. During my research, I found the book Trustful Alabama, A Brief History, by the author Gary Lloyd. And I met with Gary to see if we can learn about life in the Cahaba Project. The Cahaba Project was created uh, between 1936 and 1938. That's when all of this that you see around you was, was constructed. It took a two-year process, uh, consisted of 287 homes where it was the final total. There were plans for 300 plus, but we ended up with 243 single family homes, 44 duplexes, a lot of which you see right out here on North and South Mall and uh, it cost the government $2.6 million to do so. So how is the Cahaba Project different from any other homestead projects in the United States? It's different really because of the land that we're standing on. Um, prior to the project's construction between 1936 and 1938, there was a blast furnace that produced iron that, that was really in this location. The housing project was initially called Slack Heap Village due to the slack from a blast furnace that produced pig iron in the area in the late 1800s and early 1900s, which made the land difficult for farming. Slag you can still find all throughout this area in Trustful. You know, slag is just a, it's a byproduct of that iron making that was happening at the furnace. These pieces are, you know, well over a hundred years old at this point, uh, and that that iron that they were making, you know, went toward armament efforts in World War I. So, and these, these pieces, this stuff is the reason that this homestead ended up like it is. Cause if you're trying to plant stuff, if you're trying to farm out here, this is what you're dealing with. The mall in the Cahaba Elementary School was once the site of a blast furnace and it was last operated in 1919 and was abandoned until it was dismantled in 1933. The government said, we still want this location, but they had to pivot and they really had to kind of change course on what the idea was for here. And, you know, coming out of the Great Depression, they wanted to present an image of America that was fruitful, successful. They said, you know what, we're gonna make this a suburban community and we're gonna make it the best that we can be. In a way I've read, they tried to show off with this neighborhood with this project, and it was lovingly referred to as the government's country club. I really want to know how life was in the Cahaba project in the late 1930s and 1940s. So now, I'm meeting with Mr. Glenn, George Glenn, who rose to fame in his own unique way. And my claim to fame is that I was the first baby born in this project after it was finished in 1938. I was born August 8th, 1938. My mother and father had recently moved into the project. They were the first ones to move into the project. Life 
growing up in the Trussell Project was always family oriented. This was a considered a bedroom community. Everybody that moved in worked in the city of Birmingham. So the father would work during the day and the, the mother and the kids, they would associate with each other in, in Trustful and the kids. We always did our own things. We had groups on one street that played the other groups on the next street. The Cahaba Project ultimately opened in April 1938 and residents rented homes from the federal government. The mall was designed to mirror the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Rental rates ranged from $14 to $23 per month, beginning on June 1, 1939. In 1947, the Cahaba Project residents voted to incorporate their community with the newly formed town of Trussville. That same year, the government sold the homes to individuals ranging from $4,400 to $9,000. What was life like growing up in the Cahaba Projects? From everyone I've spoken to uh, that grew up in the 1940s, 1950s here, it was it was rather idyllic. You know, we're kind of out of the depression. You know, yeah, you, you had World War II, but you know, I've heard from people, you know, that were children at that time that said you, you wouldn't have had any idea. One of the things I remember about growing up with all the kids in the neighborhood, we lived up on Pine Street, and my daddy bought a goat and wagon, and I still have some movie pictures of my daddy leading that goat and wagon down the street, and 15, 20 kids jumping on and off that wagon. The only thing I can remember even that associates with the, the slag heat that used to be right here is they had a slag heap behind the, the high school and that's where all the kids had to go to, to smoke was the, down in the slag slag heap pile and the creek behind it is that runs well the Cahaba is probably 200 yards from right here is where we used to swim growing up growing up we had the heat we had was from coal. And every morning on a cold morning like this, you'd wake up and there was a whole cloud of, of, of smoke from the, the coal that was being burned. So we had smog back then. During my research, I came across an unexpected history fact about the Cahaba Project and Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson made one notable visit to Birmingham during the peak of his popularity. He and his brothers came to the city in the summer of 1984 to rehearse for their victory tour. A little fun fact is that on a Sunday morning, Michael put on a fake mustache, afro wig, hat, and a black suit, and first attended a church service in Centerpoint, and then went door to door handing out literature on behalf of the Jehovah's Witness at the Cahaba Projects for about two hours. No one knew it was him until it hit the papers the next day. It was pretty easy to fool the adults, but the kids would look at me and say to their parents that, he's Michael Jackson. The parents laughed it off and told the children I was not. I enjoyed that, Michael Jackson said in one of his interviews. The other parts of the Cahaba Project, I mean, you know, it's largely residential, park space, that kind of thing, but we're, we're standing very close to two buildings that were also a part of the Resettlement Administration's efforts in Trustful, in the Cahaba Project. That's the original Hewitt High School. This one opened in uh, 1938, 1939, and it's been here ever since. The other building, uh, Heritage Hall, which is now, one side of the building is Active Theater. The other side of the building is, holds the Trustful History Museum. Decare. Heritage Hall was built in 1938 as part of the Cahaba Project. The building originally housed a store and filling station. It was restored in 1988 and now serves as a museum of trustful artifacts and is often open to the public for tours. All right, Gary, where are we at right now? We're at the site of Jefferson County Convict Camp Number 3 in Trustful. We're right along the banks of the Cahaba River and right behind Parkway Drive. So, Jefferson County Convict Camp Number Three. What do we know about that convict camp? We know it was here, and that's about it. 
Uh, okay. We, we have found some newspaper articles from the 1920s, early 1930s. We know that a John M. Warren was the warden for the prison camp, that he was facing trial because he was accused of being in charge of participating with 12 men in a flogging party, Patton's Chapel, on June 10, 1927. Two black men stated that they were dragged from their homes at about 10 p.m. and were taken into the woods, beaten, and left for dead. The man alleged that this grew out of rumors that both victims were selling alcohol to minors who were operating a small store on Montgomery Highway. It is unclear of the outcome and how long the trial was. Ceased operations in 1935 when the government came in and bought the land, bought the area uh, to construct the Cava project. I've only seen one photo of the convict camp and uh, that, that's really all I've been able to find. So we got no maps, we got no records, we got absolutely nothing except one picture. That's all I've been able to find. Where did you find that picture? So the picture where I saw it first was in uh, Earl and Carol Massey's book, Trustful Through the Years. Okay. Uh, it was printed in there. There's a copy in the Trustful History Museum and it just shows like a corner, maybe front kind of facade of the building and a car right beside it which I believe was right here in this area, which I believe was a road at okay. that time. So, okay, so what makes you think the picture was taken right here? What, what makes you think that? Well, the picture that I've got, it uh -huh. just, it, it has that, it just kind of looks like it fits. It's this front, front kind of left corner. The building appears to push back uh -huh. this way. And we've been able to follow kind of the, the foundation of this back that way. So this looks like the very front of that building. And it looks like about where we're standing is where this, this old vehicle that was parked there. Uh -huh. It looks like that was probably parked right in this area. I wanted to be sure and compare the prison camp picture with the location. And I am convinced that this picture was taken right here. The two things that helped me come to this conclusion was the corner of the building and the tree in front of the building. What started as a search for an old prison camp and furnace ended up with a discovery of a homestead that was built out of the Great Depression. The homestead was unlike any other that I had ever seen. It was obvious that this place had been here for a very long time, and I couldn't help but see that something that's so unique and beautiful rose out of the ashes from the Great Depression. Fond memories were made in a time of repair. Now. When I look at the Cahaba Project, I see families, friends, that were always working hard to make the Cahaba Project a success. I was amazed by the story, and it made me realize that even in the darkest of times, there are always people who are willing to help others, and that there is always hope. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Please consider subscribing to this channel, giving me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment. I really appreciate your support, and I can't wait to see you again when we explore history.